this is my project. I'm here today to just talk to you about my previous PhD research and how it has developed into a project that um, Emerging Minds have kindly funded for me. And I'm going to be talking about racial bullying and how and what some of the issues are and how I hope to address some of those issues in this forthcoming work. So my previous PhD work was all about exploring the experience of living with body dysmorphic disorder, which is a mental health condition characterized by experiencing um, preoccupations with one or more perceived flaws in your physical appearance. They might be um, very, very slight or completely unnoticeable at all to other people. And it's actually classified as an OCD and related condition in the DSM. Um, it only affects a very small, well, they say it only affects a very small amount of the general population, 2%, but it's thought that this percentage could be much higher because of the shame surrounding the disorder, and lots of people are too ashamed to come forward to seek help because they're worried that they might be perceived as vain or invalidated. And despite that very low prevalence, it has a huge suicidal ideation rate of up to 80%. Um, which is which is awful. Um, and within my PhD work, uh, all across all of my studies, participants recalled experiencing adverse experiences in their childhood, and that mostly included bullying, teasing, and abuse in their childhood from friends, family, peers, um, at school. And this led up to them developing a negative relationship with the self, um, extremely distorted views of how they actually look. And a lot of them involuntary, even now in adulthood, involuntary recall vivid memories of the bullying or teasing that they experienced at school and in their childhood. Um, one of the limitations of my work was that I only used an adult sample. And once I'd conducted all of the studies and realized how embedded these experiences were in childhood, I wanted to go on to develop the project further and look at how bullying and teasing might affect children, whether we come to the same sort of conclusions. And another limitation was my sample wasn't particularly diverse. Um, I didn't specify um, that you had to be a particular race at all to take part. And because there's so little research on BDD as it is, I wanted quite a um, wide scope of experiences. So it's only in this project that I've decided to focus more on the racial aspect of bullying. And also linked with my own lived experience, I experienced racial bullying for a 10 year period at school. And this led to um, a really unhealthy relationship with my own physical appearance linked to my race. So just a bit of background for you all on um, what we currently know about bullying that focuses on physical appearance so far. Not a huge amount of research, as I mentioned, but there was quite a recent study led by Be Real called the In Your Face campaign. And they found that over half of secondary school age children had been bullied for their physical appearance. And um, over half of those children had tried to change their physical appearance in some way to try and avoid that bullying. And those children said that the bullying had started by the age of 10, which is incredibly young to be going through such a, such a terrible experience. But one thing I noticed about this particular campaign was it didn't focus on racial bullying. So we don't know how much of this bullying was linked to um, people's race or how diverse the sample was. Uh, in terms of racial bullying, um, it's on the rise, as, as we all know, but the NSPCC found that children had been contacting Childline as quite a sharp uptick of children talking about changing their physical appearance and whitening their skin to try and avoid racial bullying at school. And in the UK schools, the Guardian newspaper conducted an independent study via um, freedom of information requests. They found that over 60,000 racist incidents have been recording in, in schools in five years. 
and schools don't actually have to report racist incidents anymore to the local authorities and um, due to a change in government policy which occurred in 2017. So it's thought that this figure could be significantly higher. Um, racial bullying has been in the headlines in recent years. Uh, I've noticed that there has been quite a lot of media interest in it recently. Um, some of these terrible headlines, which are entirely shocking to see children at such a young age and below secondary school age even. And the two headlines on the right were actually reported just last month. So it's absolutely heartbreaking to see how it's affecting children. And I just want to do something about it. So how does my previous research linked to racial bullying. Um, I don't want to say for definite that racial bullying can cause BDD, but I do have strong reason to believe it can still contribute to severely negative body image and general body image dissatisfaction. And as I mentioned, there's very little research in this area. I found one study, um, quite a recent study that found that racial teasing can affect the body image of ethnic minority groups. And this study was conducted in Singapore a few years ago, and the researchers found that it was the skin colour that was the main target of the bullying. But I'm also interested in other aspects of, of the appearance, whether it's to do with specific facial features or um, body way of dressing, hair texture, things like that. And we all know that racism can affect our self-esteem very well, terribly and how this could impact our, um, how we view ourselves going into adulthood and our relationship with our identity. Um, my research project, I hope in my research project, I hope to address three main research questions, which will be answered by three components to the overall study. Um, my first question is, I want to find out what the current literature tells us about the implications of racial bullying that focuses specifically on appearance. This uh, research question might have to be widened out quite significantly because there isn't a huge amount out there, but I want to see what, what we do already know and, and how I can build on that. My second question, I'm interested in finding out how children or what children think is important to consider when taking on a research project like this even though I have lived experience of racial bullying myself I know that times have changed and it's very different at school now so I want to make sure that my research is um, culturally sensitive and suitable for children to take part in and my third research question is um, interested in how young people actually come to understand and come to terms with the experience of our math bullying and how this impacts on their mental health and, and well-being. So as I mentioned, there are three components to the project. Um, the first aspect of the project is to conduct a scoping review of the bullying literature. Um, I'm making a start on that currently. I completed the protocol, which will be um, shared with the open science framework just to register it and from then I'm going to develop or we'll conduct two to three informal discussion groups with young children at secondary school they're called project development sessions and in those sessions I'm hoping to talk to the children about my plans and how I'm going to conduct the interviews just get their feedback really any suggestions that they might have I want to really involve them in, in each step of the research because the, the project is to benefit them and their mental health and well-being. So I want to have huge involvement from them. And then the third aspect of the project is where the children will be invited to create artwork to visually represent their experiences of racial bullying. Um, I found in my previous work that using creative methods um, really helped us to access some of the previously inaccessible and internal experiences that people with BDD um, held within themselves. So I'm hoping that I can achieve the same sort of effect in this project as well. And um, it also 
makes it a lot easier for people to talk about their experience in an interview if they have a visual cue in front of them and um, it can really help to guide the conversation. And for this project, um, I'm going to be using the framework for the analysis of drawings, which is the uh, visual framework I used in one study of my PhD research. It enables the researcher to explore the lived experience of the participant in a very full and rich way. And I found that it almost acted, of, in using artwork in the studies, almost acted as a bridge between the concealed, um, which is the inner experience and the unconcealed, which is what we hope to draw out of the, of the children. And follow-up interviews will be analysed using interpretative phenomenological analysis, um, which is a qualitative research method that focuses on gaining insight into an individual's ideographic and personal lived experience. And then I'm going to take both forms of the analysis at parallel and analyze them together at, at the case level to try and see if I can identify any commonalities before generating themes. And this is the framework for the analysis of drawings for those of you who might not be familiar with it. Uh, it's a 15 item um, framework, highly recommend it for if you're going to be working with visual data, it can be artwork, photographs, whatever it is that you're using. And I found that it was a really beneficial tool for looking at the artwork and creative method, creative data in a more deep and thorough way. And there's just some references for various articles that I've mentioned in the presentation. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you all for listening.